Okay, so we're continuing chapter 15. They found out that Oz is a humbug hidden behind a screen, and we're going to do part two. So they sat down and listened while he told the following tale. I was born in Omaha. Why, that isn't very far from Kansas, said Dorothy. No, but it's further from here, he said, shaking his head sadly. When I grew up, I became a ventriloquist, and at that, I was very well trained by a great master. I can imitate any kind of bird or beast. Here he meowed so like a kitten that Toto perked up his ears and looked everywhere to see where she was. After a time, continued Oz, I tired of that, and I became a balloonist. What is that? asked Dorothy. A man go, who goes up in a balloon on circus day so as to draw a crowd of people together and get them to pay to see the circus, he explained. Oh, she said, I know. Well, one day I went up in a balloon and the ropes got twisted so that I couldn't come down again. It went way up above the clouds so far that a current of air struck it and carried it many, many miles away. For a day and a night, I traveled through the air and on the morning of the second day, I awoke and found the balloon floating over a strange and beautiful country. It came down gradually and I was not hurt a bit, but I found myself in the midst of a strange people who seeing me come from the clouds thought I was a great wizard. Of course, I let them think so because they were afraid of me and promised to do anything I wished them to do. Just to amuse myself and keep the good people busy, I ordered them to build this city and my palace. And they did it all willingly and well. Then I thought, as the country was so green and beautiful, I would call it the Emerald City. And to make the name fit better, I put green spectacles on all the people so that everything they saw was green. But isn't everything here green, asked Dorothy? No more than any other city, replied Oz. But when you wear green spectacles, why, of course, everything you see looks green. The Emerald City was built as a great many years ago, for I was a young man when the balloon brought me here, and I am a very old man now. But my people have worn green glasses on their eyes so long that most of them think it really is an Emerald City. And it certainly is a beautiful place, abounding in jewels and precious metals and every good thing that is needed to make one happy. I have been good to the people and they like me. But ever since this palace was built, I have shut myself up and would not see any of them. One of my greatest fears was that the witches, for while I had no magical powers at all, I soon found out that the witches were really able to do wonderful things. There were four of them in this country and they ruled the people who lived in the north and south and east and west. Fortunately, the witches of the north and south were good and I knew they would do me no harm. But the witches of the east and the west were terribly wicked and had they not thought I was more powerful than they themselves, they would surely have destroyed me. As it was, I lived in deadly fear of them for many years. So you can imagine how pleased I was when I heard your house had fallen on the Wicked Witch of the East. When you came to me, I was willing to promise anything if you would only do away with the other witch. But now that you have melted her, I am ashamed to say I cannot keep my promise. I think you are a very bad man, said Dorothy. Oh no, my dear. I'm really a very good man, but I'm a very bad wizard. I must admit. Can't you give me brains? asked the scarecrow. You don't need them. You are learning something every day. A baby has brains, but it doesn't know much. Experience is the only thing that brings knowledge. And the longer you are on earth, the more experience you are sure to get. That may be true, said the scarecrow, but I shall be very unhappy unless you give me brains. The false wizard looked at him carefully. Well, he said with a sigh, I am not much of a magician, as I said, but if you will come to me tomorrow morning, I will stuff your head with brains. I cannot tell you how to use them, however. 
You must find that out for yourself. Oh, thank you, thank you, cried the scarecrow. I'll find a way to use them, never fear. But how about my courage, asked the lion anxiously. You have plenty of courage. I am sure, answered Oz. All you need is confidence in yourself. There is no living thing that is not afraid when it faces danger. True courage is in facing danger when you are afraid. And that kind of courage you have in plenty. Perhaps I have, but I'm scared just the same, said the lion. I shall really be very unhappy unless you give me the sort of courage that makes one forget he is afraid. Very well, I will give you that sort of courage tomorrow, replied Oz. How about my heart? asked the tin woodsman. Why, as for that, answered Oz, I think you are wrong to want a heart. It makes most people unhappy. If you only knew it, you are in luck not to have a heart. That must be a matter of opinion, said the tin woodman. For my part, I will bear all the unhappiness without a murmur if you will give me the heart. Very well, answered Oz meekly. Come to me tomorrow and you shall have a heart. I have played wizard for so many years that I may as well continue the part a little longer. And now, said Dorothy, how am I to get back to Kansas? We shall have to think about that, replied the little man. Give me two or three days to consider the matter, and I'll try to find a way to carry you over the desert. In the meantime, you shall all be treated as my guests. And while you live in the palace, my people will wait upon you and obey your slightest wish. There is only one thing I ask in return for my help, such as it is. You must keep my secret and tell no one I am a humbug. They agreed to say nothing of what they had learned and went back to their rooms in high spirits. Even Dorothy had hoped that the great and terrible humbug, as she called him, would find a way to send her back to Kansas. And if he did, that she was willing to forgive him for everything.